The EACR Congress took place in Manchester this year. Former President Moshe Oren from the Weizmann Institute in Israel talked me through some of the key themes. Perhaps what's most impressive is uh, that the basic research world and the clinical oncology world are really getting much closer to each other in a tangible way. And uh, very often it's even hard to draw the line between what is clinical research and what is basic research. There's an increasing amount of data that come out of clinical trials. And I think this, this is uh, clearly one of the immediate challenges that the field is dealing with making sense quickly of a huge amount of data. The data is there, the technology is advancing very rapidly and we've seen, in fact, some impressive and even amazing new advances in technology that allow us to connect uh, high-end approaches together, combining microscopy with sequencing, knowing what an individual cell within a tumor that we see where it is, where it's, and who its neighbors are, and at the same time figuring out what exact, exactly is going on in the cell, which genes are turned on, which interactions with its environment are occurring. So this is something that has been a dream a few years ago. Now we can really dissect uh, the actions that are going within a tumor in a much more detailed way. Could you give a specific example? A growing uh, awareness in the field of cancer biology and cancer treatment is how important is the interaction of cancer cells with the microenvironment. And uh, of course, this has become most notable because of all the immune therapy advances. So we know a lot about the interaction of the cancer cells with T cells and how uh, antibodies to immune checkpoint uh, molecules can turn on the immune system against cancer cells, but now we are increasingly appreciating that additional components of the immune system are very critical in creating the right environment for T cells to target and kill cancer cells. And in fact, uh, we are getting ideas into why many, why in some patients cancer immunotherapy fails, whereas in others it succeeds. It's not just the T cells, but it's very much what's going on around them, what other cells are there, and, uh, and uh, we gain understanding now very much about what factors within the tumor cells modulate the type of immune microenvironment that is formed around them. So it's really, uh, there's much more understanding into the crosstalk. It's a mutual crosstalk between the cancer cell, a local immune microenvironment, and actually even cells that come in from a distance in response to signals that are generated in the vicinity of the tumor cells, not only by the tumor cells. So we are beginning to get more of a network view of the cancer cell within really an integrative environment. And this is eventually what we'll need to know in order to target tumors successfully. I think also another aspect that comes in is synergy between different therapy approaches, which we know for a long time uh, are necessary. That's what is being given to patients, combination therapy. But rather than just uh, asking how do combinations of two compounds or two treatments affect the cancer cells themselves, we see that many of those treatments, in fact, uh, are also modulated by targets that are present not within the tumor cells, but within their environment. So I think this is a new way of understanding, a more correct way, a more holistic way of understanding what we need to overcome and what we need to manipulate in order to achieve effective cancer therapy. So to me, this was one of the exciting insights. It's, I would say, the holistic view rather than the cancer cell-centric view. If we just understand what's going on in the cancer cell, including all the mutations, all the omics that we can do in it, we still don't understand what's going on in the real cancer. And I think now we are much closer to understanding it the right way. What surprised you at the Congress? One practical uh, message, I would maybe sing a, a, relate to the lecture yesterday of, Mike, of Michael Yaffe, who showed that uh, by understanding better 
the mechanisms of synergy between different drugs and different treatments, you can make much more effective use of combination therapy, and in particular, that in fact uh, creating, uh, staggering the treatment and treating the cancer with one drug, waiting for a defined time window, and then coming in with the other one could have much more dramatic effects than combining them together, even though in theory, each drug does what it does, and we know supposedly what it does, but each drug changes the cell in a way that may render it either more responsive or less responsive to another treatment. And as we appreciate and probably already know long ago, a response to a cell of a cell, of a cancer cell or any cell to a treatment is not static. Things happen in a time course. Uh, you get processes turning on, turning off. And if you know when to wait with the second drug and understand when the cell is ripe for maximum efficacy of the other drug, you can achieve much better uh, responses with the drugs that we already have, even without need to develop additional drugs, which, of course, we will continue to do. What would you say were the take-home messages of the Congress? We need to continue to intensify the crosstalk between researchers who come from very different disciplines and between medical oncologists because our ability to tackle cancer successfully will depend increasingly on combining areas of expertise which no single person can handle. That's great. Thank you very much.